You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging their net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that the disciples, when they see Jesus risen from the dead, they don't recognize him easily. I'm sorry, could you just close the door of the sacristy? And so we have this mysterious presence of the risen Lord. And this is just one of the indicators that his risen reality He's the same Jesus with the wounds. They can put their finger into the wounds and so on. He eats with them. And yet, his form is different. He's not immediately recognizable. And so there's a process of faith involved. And faith isn't make-believe. Faith is receiving information, knowledge of facts through the vehicle of trust in another. We believe the person because this person is trustworthy, is truthful. When the people, when we discover somebody telling lies, we become very leery of what they're saying. And this is a major phenomenon around the world in fake news, that people's trust is damaged. But the whole way of faith, St. Paul says, comes through the ear. So that means it's told. Faith is not primarily about seeing. It's about accepting what's told to me. I take it on good faith. I trust that they are telling the truth. And then there's a whole lot of, obviously, further development that needs to be done to understand why all these facts of the resurrection are facts. And they have been witnessed to us by those who then experienced them. Because at this breakfast, they obviously have an experience of the risen Lord. And they will actually renew their commitment to Jesus through this 
and will live that out in a growing way until their martyrdom. So they seal their testimony with their own lives. If they wanted to have some personal advantage, they wouldn't do this personal advantage in a worldly sense, because actually what they do is they do the greatest personal advantage. <laughs> they hold on to Christ, their Savior, their Redeemer. And thereby they have the greatest advantage, even though in this life it might mean martyrdom. And actually that's where we see Peter now, who has been so weak that he denied Christ a few weeks earlier, and now after Pentecost, he is being hauled in before the Sanhedrin, the highest body of responsibility for the Jewish people and their faith, their teaching. And he has to answer in front of the high priest, and these people are extraordinarily well prepared. They know, they have studied, they are very well versed in the scriptures. I read a little commentary today, or heard a little commentary today about the psalm we have, Psalm 118, and the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. And because of the pattern of the Seder, the Jewish Passover memorial, we know this psalm was part of the practice. And it was the last psalm that Jesus prayed together with the disciples. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. But this actually wasn't just referring him to Jesus, of course, in the first place, but it also referred earlier to the prophets who were rejected, and most of the prophets in the Old Testament were also killed in Jerusalem by the people, or in other places. And then we have uh, the experience now of the disciples. They're also a cornerstone because our whole faith hinges on their fidelity, on their witness, and they give witness, and by giving witness, our faith is, has a foundation. The apostles are the foundation stones of our faith, and that's referred to also in Scripture. The new heavenly Jerusalem coming down on the foundation stones of the twelve apostles. And so uh, their uh, martyrdom seals their witness for our faith in Jesus risen from the dead. And here we see Peter completely transformed. And it happens in little stages. And Jesus took the care and the attention to actually uh, go into his fishing life again. He did, went there to call him, washing his nets with his brother Andrew, and now he goes back and finds him there again to recover him after his denial. And so this is very interesting to see the tenderness of God, the gentleness of God, who is the ultimate fisher. He's the one who's calling us all in. He's looking for us where we are. God shows up where we are. Well, God is everywhere. But we are encounter with God. We don't have to go to some strange island. Our encounter with God is where we are. The encounter with God in daily charity, in daily prayer, where we are. Daily charity are the people around me that I serve daily prayer, my encounter with God each day in, my, in, in the expression of my soul. And so this is, our faith is really in the ordinary life. The encounter with Christ matures in the ordinary life. And now Peter is in an extraordinary moment. He's taken out of his ordinary life and he's teaching at the temple in Jerusalem. And a man has been healed of from being crippled. And these are other signs that also testify to the divine mission, divine mission, godly mission sent by Christ to go out to the whole world. And he says, in Jesus' name, you will be uh, healed. And that's what he's defending in front of the high priest and the other authorities. And we must remember that Peter is a guy, a fisherman from the Sea of Galilee. He didn't do Harvard with Jesus. He didn't graduate with a doctorate in biblical studies. Peter is a normal guy. And here we have him in front of the Sanhedrin, the highest body, the Supreme Court, if you will, and the executive of the people of, of, of God. And he's giving answer and witness. What a transformation for Peter. And we also will be transformed. We are being transformed. The Lord is taking us from where we are, and you have no idea what a word you will say will mean for others. Just one little story today. 
one of the consecrated women asked me to include somebody in the prayer intentions of a secular Jewish man, he asked her, please have a priest pray for this person that's very close to me that's going through a terrible trial. It's amazing, you know, Alexandra didn't preach to him, and yet he asked her for prayer. Many times our witness is simply being a Christian, being generous, living the joy of the faith, and people are drawn. Where we are, where they are, God is reaching us, God is connecting us. And that's how the church built up over the centuries, over two millennia, and we have many difficulties. The church faces many difficulties in our time, but God is building up everything, even through the brokenness of Peter and the brokenness of each person, each one of us. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.